here are 91 things you must do in Project Slayer. Starting with 9 things you have to do in map 1. Number 1 is getting a lantern. Because if you don't have one, you will be basically blind. You can just buy it from Kenzie for only 600 wen. Anyway, number 2 is getting total concentration. If you are a slayer, getting this is a must. Because when you get this total concentration, you will breathe while fighting. And your breathing capacity will increase to 115. You can get the total concentration by going to the butterfly mansion and breaking those gourds. But there's one problem to get them. You need 15,050 when. And how are you going to get that? Well, number three is getting a fishing rod. When you get a fishing rod, you will make when in no time. Because by fishing, you can get three different fish. We have the owl fish, which can sell for 90 when. The owl fish, which is 180 when. And the owl fue. Why do all these names look like each other? And that one is 300 when. You can get the fishing rod by talking to this ginger at the Ushumaru village. Moving on to number four, the final selection. The final selection is a must, especially for slayers. Because when you finish the final selection, you become a demon slayer. But for demons, it can be helpful too. Since you can get an ore and this will give you the ability to buy something, which normally costs robux. And just admit it, we're all poor. Also, if you want to beat the final selection, I would recommend getting one to three friends to help you. But if you do not have friends like me... Bruh. It is still possible, but you just have to camp on a rock and use long range attacks if you're a pussy. <clears throat> Number 5 is getting a breathing style slash demon art. This is a very important one, since if you don't have a breathing style or demon art, are you even playing the game then? But what breathing style or blood demon art should you get? Very good question. Personally, I would recommend becoming a demon and getting swamp, dream or ice. Which is but if you really want to become a slayer, you should get either wind or water. But later, when you get a higher level, you can get mist, flame or beast. Okay, sorry, sorry. Bruh. Numero 6 is getting a good katana. Many players just buy the gold katana and call it a day. But that's not good. Because the gold katana is just bad. So instead, you should grind bosses to get one of these katanas. This will give you way better buffs. By the way, I would recommend farming Caden. Since he is insanely easy. Number 7 is for when you are a demon. And that is getting claws. Just grind for 250 demon horns, please. And then buy them at the Ushuma... Ooh. Ushumaru village. Anyway, number 8, straw head. The straw head is very important for demons because it will give you a sun immunity. But you shouldn't sleep on it when you are a slayer because it will give you an extra 2 block, which isn't too bad. And for obtaining it, I would also recommend farming Kaden. Sorry, Kaden. Number 9 is Hoari. For this one, also just grind Kaden and it will give you health. Now I'm thinking about it, I'm just explaining how to abuse this poor guy Kaden. Here are 9 things you must do in the second map. First, we have to get to level 75. So, I would just recommend grinding Tyrone quests at Norme Village. You just have to do that until you are level 75. After that, you should get the Soryu fighting style if you are a demon. Which you can get at Village 2 for just 7k when. And then you have to complete these quests. But they are very easy. And when you have this Soryu fighting style, you can go from Village 2 to this bald guy. And what you have to do with this guy is just grind his quest and then beat up all these idiots until you are around level 100. And from then, you should do boss rotations where you basically go around the entire map killing bosses and you just have to get all their drops. If you have no idea which boss rotation you should take, well, I would recommend going from Duma, which is the Devourer's Jaw, then going over here and talk to this guy and then teleport to Sound Cave and kill Tangent, which is over here. And then teleport to Akiza cave and kill this guy or a demon I have no idea what he is anyway you should then teleport to cave 1 and over there go to Rangoku and just smack him in the head and then when you have killed him go over the horse behind here and teleport to mist trainer location and kill this guy this was the rotation you just basically have to do that all over again but you might think 
When should I stop? You should grind this until you get the skill of your specific blood demon art or breeding style. You should also get 10 ores, bar fans, which is a 1% drop, or a side, which is a 2.5% drop chance. You can get this from tier 3 chests, but it's a 5% drop chance from tier 5 chests. Yeah, and this is going to take a while. But for the next things, we are going to need 150,000 dollaritos. So you should grind dungeons, which is by far the best way to make money. And just to get a higher score in dungeons, I would recommend getting your friends. And when it starts, just kill everything as fast as possible. But when it gets more difficult, run around the map in circles and just stay together. On boss rounds, you should try to group the bosses together and use abilities to kill them all at once. And when you don't have friends, which is very common for Project Slayer players, Okay, I'm sorry. It is pretty much the same, except that you should try to get the volcano map, since that's the smallest map. And you should use Ice Blood Demon Art, that's by far the best. So when you have finally finished a dungeon, you just walk over here and spend all your points on when. And just keep repeating that over and over and over and over and over again. And when you finally have enough, you should grind dungeons for a bit more. Yeah, you should grind a lot of dungeons, I'm sorry. So that when you want to use the scythe, you can buy the metal scythe for 1850 points. And if you are a slayer, buy the volcanic, thundercloud, and butterfly katana. And after that, go over to the devourer's jaw and buy the devourer katana. And if you didn't remember, this was 150,000 when. You also need the 10 ores and the katanas you bought. And when you want to use the scythe, you should go from the devourer's jaw and just follow the video here. And at this statue, go underground over here and you can buy the polar side. If you manage to get the fans, you should get the devourer fans, which is the same as the rest. But you need to hand in the fans. So when you finally have your weapon, you can grind more dungeons, Mugen train and bosses to get a full set of polar gear and other accessories to become the best possible in the game. You can look at the encyclopedia to find everything and see how to get them. Yeah, good Good luck with all of this. Here are 9 mistakes you must stop doing in Project Slayer. Mistake 1 is waiting for bosses to respawn. Grinding bosses is essential to progress, but just waiting for them to respawn can be a waste of time, because instead you should make the most of your waiting time. So when you are waiting you can do stuff like completing quests, slaying other enemies, or even trying your hand at fishing. This way you make progress in multiple aspects of the game and have more fun overall because waiting is just boring. The second mistake is buying the green katana. I often see beginners make this mistake. They just think, oh, let's get it because it's the cheapest. But trust me, it is not worth it. This weapon gives you almost zero buffs and it is just a waste of your hard earned when. Instead, you immediately should go for the gold katana, which only costs 1069 when and also offers some solid buffs. Mistake number three is playing alone. Playing alone can become boring very quickly because it's much more fun to team up with your friends and play together and some parts of the game like bosses and the final selection are nearly impossible to complete alone so gather your friends form a party and play together the fourth mistake is using a bad clan if you use a bad clan you will have little to no buffs and that's not what we want right so you should try to spin for a good clan. But what if you do not have spins? Well, you should use codes, because by redeeming codes, you can earn plenty of spins and increase your chances of getting legendary or even a supreme clan. Here are some codes which will give you a lot of spins. Mistake number 5 is not blocking. Trust me, I made this mistake too when I first started playing. But blocking is essential, because when you block attacks from your enemies, you are able to take less damage and stay alive longer. And if you master this blocking, it will help you win more fights and even take down those tough bosses that seemed impossible before. Mistake number 6 is not using the map points. I see a lot of beginner make this mistake, but they can be 
a real game changer because when you unlock a location using a map point you can teleport to that location and all you need to do is just talk to the horse guy and click on that location and if you do this it will save you a lot of traveling time and that's perfect so now you can focus on the exciting parts of the game the seventh mistake is only farming levels i know farming levels is really important but you shouldn't forget about other important aspects of the game so take some time to grind for items mastery and more and when you also grind for other stuff you will unlock more items abilities and just overall make your way stronger and this will even help you with leveling up Mistake 8 is switching your playstyle. Now, there are a lot of players who grind hard to reach a high mastery level in a specific breathing style. But sometimes they decide to switch to a different breathing style or even become a demon. But here's the problem. When you switch, you lose all the progress you have made in that previous breathing style. So if you've invested a lot of time and effort, it can take very long to start all over over again so you should stick to a style that suits your playstyle and preferences the ninth mistake is not learning or using your combos oh boy this is a big one because if you're not learning and using your combos you're missing out on a ton of damage potential because combos allow you to hit your opponents multiple times in a row keeping them unable to hit you and dealing massive damage and by not using combos you're way more likely to to get hit more and struggle against tough bosses and enemies so make sure to practice and master combos today i'll be showing you the rarest things in project slayers and trust me they get very rare we're going to start with the generic things 100 of the people have like being in a clan having combat and being in map one but no one cares about that so here are the things that are below a hundred percent chance and that's like being in a common clan or an uncommon clan it can get way rarer than this so if you are still in one of these clans then you should probably spin for an another anyway moving on to 15 percent or lower we have rolling the demon arts you won which is a one in eight chance or better said 12.5 percent and just an eeny weeny bit lower we have getting a rare clan but this is still very high compared to the things we have coming up for example at 10 percent we have getting any of these skills from these bosses like the boss drop snow tide vortex and this is weird because this is the only skill skill that does not have a 10% drop chance. But now comes the fun part. We're finally gonna be getting into some rare items because the next one is the straw hat with a 1% drop chance. And the straw hat is obtained from tier 1, tier 2 and tier 10 chests. Okay, now we are finally going to get to the rarest boss drop. The polar top and the polar button. Which has a 0.25 chance of being obtained from the ooey Uvigahara Uvi Uvi dungeon. That's two times less likely than getting a supreme clan. So yeah, that's pretty rare. But do you know what's even more rare than that? Well, getting three of them at the same time, which is 0.0156. <gasps> Better said, that is a chance of one out of 6,400. That's pretty insane. And someone even did this. Look at this video, which is on your screen, for example. Um, if you thought this was rare, well, now we're getting into the real juicy stuff, which is insanely rare. And one of them you wouldn't even expect is rare. Picture this, you are just vibing in Project Slayers and... Wait, what? There are two people with the same breathing style or demon art as you. Maybe it sounds common, but it's actually really rare. So after doing a lot of calculations, actually it was pretty easy, I found out it has a 0 0.277... Oh, oh, eight, three, oh, I'm not even going to... Uh, yeah. But yeah, just a really low chance of happening. There are a lot of titles which are pretty easy to obtain. Like all of these which are randomly gotten from killing an NPC. Or these which are obtained by completing dungeons. Well, okay. They are kind of difficult. But not even close to the unobtainable items. Well, they are obtainable. But not by regular people with the least rare being content creator. The chance of meeting a person with this title is um 
one in six seven five zero 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 yeah i can't even count that high but that isn't even close to the developer rank which only four people own and if we calculate it using my 18 year math degree we get around a one in 12.5 million chance or this number like what does that even mean but okay let me tell you about the rarest thing in project slayers which is you and the other person having the exact same characters with the exact same hair body composition clothing and this that this and this is insanely rare since there are a lot of options to choose from and if you calculate it it's a one in Five one eight one zero 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 zero. Those are a lot of zeros. But you know what's crazy? That's like thirteen thousand times less likely than being born. And you know the funny thing is, this is not even counting all the different color combinations. Please, someone do the math, since I'm not going to do it. When Project Slayers was released, the game only had four breathing styles and just one map. This is the evolution of Project Slayers. The game was officially released in June. July the 15th 2022 and it was an immediate success reaching over 100k players in the first day back then the only breathing styles and blood demon arts were wind water thunder insect blood reaper tamari and arrow and there are only seven different katanas and besides that the highest level you could get to was only 100 they also buffed and nerfed some parts of the game or better said a lot of boring stuff but before they actually released a massive update they added three new items the stylish mask the stylish hiori and the fox mask which were obtained from chests i do not know why they added them already but i guess they couldn't wait until november the 5th 2022 because that was the moment everything changed this update added a lot of stuff like when you reach level 50 you could go to the uuhana map which included a lot of bosses like Akiza, Rangoku and new areas like Norme Village, Wap City and a lot more. The level cap was also increased to level 175. There were also new clans added like the Rangoku clan. But that's not the only thing since masks, scarves, Hayoris and necklaces were also added and these were all obtained from the new dungeons and the Mugen train. This added a mass massive layer of content and made the game a lot more fun and replayable most importantly three new breathing styles and blood demon arts were added and those were flame beast mist dream swamp and shockwave which made the game way more interesting and what did you think happened to the player count yeah it skyrocketed after this update however it didn't last long because the game slowly started declining and it just kept around 4k players consistently this went on for multiple months since the game became a bit still there were no updates and yeah there were bug fixes but that's kind of boring everyone was just waiting until the new update would be released and luckily on the 13th of march update 1.5 was announced and the player count started slowly rising again and on may 19th update 1.5 was officially released and this added three new breathing styles and it also added new blood demon arts like snow sound and ice and one of the best things so far the trading system was also released this made collecting items a lot more fun and easier so you didn't have to grind for everything and the uruhana map got three new areas the sound cave snowy place and the devourer's jaw devourer and polar gear also had been released giving people new weapons and sets to grind for the maximum level cap was also increased to 225 which we know to this day there were also a lot more bosses added which gave the skills for the specific blood demon art and breathing styles there were also a lot more things released but that's just boring and i'm not going to talk about that but because of this update the player count all 
almost reached 100,000. That's like more than two, I think. Right. But there's also a dark side. When the game was at its peak, Project Slayers got hacked by an unknown person. And if you try to join the game at this moment, you would get teleported to an Among Us game. The hackers literally could do anything and they chose to add that. And I swear, if I see one person commenting sus, yo, I would just lose it, man. But okay, the Among Us incident luckily got fixed very quickly. However, the player count started to drop rapidly since the update did not make people play the game for longer. But luckily on June 14, 2023, the new update was released and some breathing was confirmed. However, we still have no clue when some breathing will be released. But you know, we are hoping that it will release soon and hopefully this will give some extra content to the game. The game isn't around for that long, so many updates will be released in the future. Today, I will be showing you guys the best way to get every title in Project Slayers. I'm also going to show some titles that you might not know exist. So first we have all of the titles which have a slim chance to be obtained from killing NPCs. And these you don't have to grind for since you will just get them by playing the game. The first one being Noob, which will give you a 1% damage reduction. Next we have Boosted, which will give you a 2% XP boost. Moving on we have Bot, which gives you one extra block point. And now we're getting into some juicy stuff. Since the next one is Mercenary, and this one gives one extra weapon or sword damage and a strength boost. The next one is Bandit Killer and it gives a simple 1% strength boost. But now the next three titles are just a bit different since you need to kill a specific amount of NPCs. And the first one of those is Marauder where you have to kill 750 NPCs. And yeah, you just get one extra block point. I think that's how you call that. And when you have killed 1000 NPCs, you get the Crusader title. And this gives the same as the Mercenary title. One weapon damage, one strength boost, and one sword damage. Come on, man. Please give us some more originality. Moving on to 3,000 NPC kills. That is Nomad. And from this, you get 20 stamina. Now, when you kill NPCs, you do damage. And for that, you also have two titles. And number one being Akuma, which you get with 1 million damage. And this will give you one strength boost. The second one is the greatest title, which you have to deal 100 million damage. Like, that is gonna take a while if you are going to be doing boss rotations. So there's a way that you can do it really easily. Well, it's still gonna take very long, but anyway. I will put a link down in the description. So now we're gonna move on to the Breathing Mastery titles. And these are pretty simple. Where if you reach Max Mastery for a specific breathing style, you get a 2.5% damage buff on that breathing. There's also the same but for Blood Demon Art. But then you get a 2.5 damage buff on your specific art. That is simple, right? So moving on to the Uwigara dungeon titles. Wait, I think this is the first time I said Uwigara right. Oh no, never mind. I'ma keep practicing. One day I will get it right. The first dungeon title is D-Rank Raider. And in order to get this, you need to finish a dungeon with at least 10 minutes. And the best way to do that is to kill every enemy as fast as possible for the first couple of minutes. And later on with boss rounds, group as many NPCs together as possible and kill them. And when you get the title, it's just an extra 1% drop rate. What the hell? And it is the same as the last one, but you need 10 10 minutes completions and it gives an extra 2% drop rate chance. Moving on, we have B rank raider and for this one you need to do 100 instead of 10 dungeons over 10 minutes and this gives you a 3% drop rate chance boost. I mean, you probably notice a pattern here, right? Now we have A rank raider, which you need to do 500 10 minutes dungeons for a 4% drop rate. And if you want to get this, it will take you about 3 and a half days of straight grinding so no sleep for you but yeah this is not even close to the last one moving on we have s rank raider where you need to do 1000 dungeons with at least 10 minutes and you might have already guessed it you will get a 5% drop rate and yeah this will probably take you a week of grinding next is double s rank raider which is 2.500 dungeon with at least 10 minutes for a 6% drop rate now the 
last one from dungeons is the triple S rank raider with 5000 dungeons with at least 10 minutes and you get a 7% drop rate and if you look at the math you need to grind for around 35 days straight to get it so if you were playing 4 hours a day you will need about 208 days so if you see anyone with this title please ask him if everything is all right so next up is the title millionaire and you need to sell 1 million total worth to uop in the trading hub and the best way to do this is to grind dungeons for when and buy bandages by this girl for your when and just sell them and then you just need to keep repeating this until you have it and then you get a five percent drop rate buff next we have the rothschild title and this one is to sell 100 million when and yeah, I would recommend the same as the last one. However, this is almost impossible to get. But if you do manage to get it somehow, you get a 10% speed buff and a 5% drop rate buff. Next up is Button Masher. And you get this by clearing Clash Practice, which you can do at the Mugen train station. And when you completed this, you get no buffs. Yeah, but speaking of Mugen train, we have the Mugen train Conqueror. Conqueror. Yeah, you just get that title. But for this, you you just have to complete the Mugen Train once and then you get 25 extra max health. Now we have Mugen Train Champion where you have to complete it 10 times and for this you get a 25 stamina and 12 health. Aha uh -huh, that rhyme. Moving on to the Mugen Train Legend where you have to complete it 100 times and here you get 25 stamina, 12 health and 1 strength boost. Next up is Bloody Train Conqueror and you get that for completing Mugen Train on Helm mode and you just get 50 extra health and now we have bloody train champion where you have to clear mugen train hell mode 10 times just to get a 50 stamina and 25 extra health and the last one of the mugen train is the bloodiest mugen legend and you have to clear mugen hell mode 100 times for this you get 50 stamina 25 max health two strength boost and a plus two percent drop rate chance now the next title is content creator and you get this well if you're a content creator and do you know what buffs you will get you get nothing anyway next title is relentless and for this you need to get 50 wins in arena and then you just get one percent extra health regen and if you have 100 wins you get the arena vanguard title which gives you a two percent health regen and a plus 30 max health the final pvp title is champion and you need 250 wins and you just get three percent health regen and also plus 30 health I mean, guys, can you please be a bit more original with these buffs? Anyway, the next title is Adept Resonance. And you get this by killing the sound trainee solo. And basically, the only way to do this is to get a private server. And no, dungeon kills do not count. And when you actually have all of them, you get 60 health. Yeah, that is not worth it. There are also more of these titles for every boss. And the requirements are all killing the boss 50 times solo. And the next seven titles all give 15 stamina and 30 health the first is beautiful butterfly you get this from killing shiran the second is come tsunami this one is obtained from killing gu the third one is egotistical striker and you get this from killing suzumaru number four is ghost water you get this from killing sabito now moving on to number five is midnight flash from killing zangetsu uh, kuchikuchu or something the sixth one is scorching ties you get this from killing nezuko number seven is unrendling typhoon you get this from killing Senemi. Now the next three give 15 stamina and 15 health. The first being Kiri Botting Conqueror from killing Zuko. Next one is Norme Conqueror from killing the Norme Bandit boss. And the third is Ushumari Conqueror from killing Kaden. The following five give 1.5% crit chance and 45 health. And number one being Chilling Apathetic from killing Duma. The second one is Demigod of Fleshiness from killing Tension. Now we have the third Fearless Progilist. You get this from killing Akaza. The fourth is the Light of Hope from Rengoku. Number five is Walking Nightmare from Killing Flesh Monster. Now we just have a couple more and then we are going to get into the real, real juicy stuff. But first, the next six give all plus 60 health. And the first is Demonic After Image from Slasher. Number two is Infinite Mist from Killing Miro Chiro Tokito or something. The third is Mercury Assassin from Killing Swampy. Number four is Pseudo Arsonist from Killing Rampy. PK. Yo, what are all the- Oh, please, please simplify.
simplify these names for me. Five is Torturous Frost from Killing Snow Trainee. Number 06 is Wild Apex from Inosuke. And the last two before some epic titles are Dreamer from Killing Enemy, which gives a plus 0.5% damage reduction and a plus 45 max health. Now we also have Mask Slaughter from Killing Hand Demon, which gives the same. And now we will finally get into the real good stuff. And the next title is Nezuko's Best Friend, which is obtained from owning the original sealed box game pass which was 5000 robux and it gives a 5% all mastery gain and a 25% xp gain that's pretty nice moving on to tester and to get this you might have already guessed it you have to be a tester and it gives you a 10% npc damage buff yeah that's pretty nice but this is nothing compared to masterful staff which is given to amazing staff members and this will give you a 50% all mastery gain, a plus 20 strength boost, and a 10% damage reduction, and a 50% XP boost. That's pretty insane. Now we have the title named Head of Staff, where you have to be the head of the staff to get it. And this will give you a plus 1 NPC damage buff a 10% damage reduction and a 50% XP boost. Next up is admin and you get it for being an admin. Yeah, you do not have to be very smart to have known that. But anyway, this will give you a 30% NPC damage buff, a 5% drop rate and a 50% XP boost. And the next title is developer and this will give you a plus 6.66 NPC damage buff. Yo, that number is kind of weird, man. And this will also give give you a 69 damage reduction and please i'm begging you don't say like oh 69 funny number or something in the comments because yeah i will uh, yeah i will just lose it then man. today i'll be showing you every single demon art in project slayers and i will also rate every ability based on how good they are starting with ice the first move is called wintry icicles with this ability you summon four icicles which will fall down as soon as you release the ability button one thing about this ability is that it also stuns your opponents but there's one problem about this ability and that is that you have to aim i just know some of you are terrible at aiming so that's why i give this ability a 7.5 out of 10 the second move is cold white prince this ability is actually insane because wherever someone is attacking you you can just press x and boom they literally have no chance this is so op and it counters basically every ability in the game so this ability gets a 10 out of 10 move number three is baron hanging I like this one because it's very easy to aim since you just have to press the button and you dash back and release a snowstorm towards the enemy this is pretty good so i'll just give it a 8.5 out of 10 move number four is freezing cloud with this ability you will start skating over ice and when you make contact with a player and release the button you will grab them doing very good damage it is also very good for mobility around the map so 9 out of 10 the fifth move is called lotus vines this ability is cool because you can hit multiple people at once since you summon a vine that will slam into the ground and anyone who get hit by this will be trapped inside an ice lotus this explodes and it will deal damage this one deserves a 8 out of 10 the last move from ice is bazi sattva with this ability you will summon a huge statue before breathing out ice and this completely freezes the enemy and the best part is that when you freeze them the statue will follow up up with a second attack how is this even allowed this is also really good so this one deserves a 10 out of 10 these were all the ice moves so if i had to rate the overall of the ice demon art i will give it a 9 out of 10 now moving on to blood we have the first move called bloodshot and you might already have guessed it this shoots blood towards the enemy but this ability isn't anything special so just a shabby 7 out of 10 move number two is explosive choke slam with this ability you will dash and grab the opponent by the neck then you lift them into the air and slam them into the ground Ooh, that's kind of aggressive this attack is pretty cool so it gets a 8.5 out of 10 the third move is explosive burst when they dashes towards the enemy you will attack them with the burst of flames doing solid damage mm, 8 out of 10 the fourth move explosive landmines this one is insanely good since you spin around 
releasing landmines and these can be detonated when pressing the move key again and the best part is it goes through blocks 9 out of 10 the fifth move is explosive blood slashes with this ability you will attack your enemy with multiple short range slashes ending it with an uppercut yeah 7.5 out of 10 the sixth move is blood burst upon using this ability you dash and slash the enemy with this ability you're leaving blood behind that can explode on command this is pretty good so it gets an 8.5 out of 10 these were all the blood abilities overall i will give blood a 8 out of 10 now the blood demon art number three is tamari ball the first move is normal throw and you guessed it you will throw a ball towards the enemy dealing damage this one is pretty boring and not that special so seven out of ten move number two is double throw this one is very original since you throw two balls instead of one yeah just a seven out of ten the third move is power kick and with this move you kick a ball towards the enemy this one also gets a seven out of ten move number four is four arms finally we have some originality since with this ability you grow four extra arms allowing you to do more damage this one lasts for 30 seconds but it still gets a 7.5 out of 10 when you have four arm mode enabled you get two extra moves and one of these moves is triple throw when you use this you will raise yourself in the air and shoot three balls towards the enemy and if you hit all of them it is a block breaker 7.5 out of 10 the final move is tamari meteor upon use you grab four balls on all of your four arms and then you just shoot them into the sky landing on the enemy like a meteor this one gets the highest score of them all an 8 out of 10 overall the blood demon art tamari ball gets a 7.5 out of 10 demon art number 4 is reaper and this one is a bit different since it also has a passive dash where instead of rolling towards the enemy you instantly dash okay moving on to move 1 reap of despair when you use this you slash the entire area around you twice with insane range and if they both hit it is a block breaker this is pretty good 8 out of 10 the second move is sony though this move turns you invisible but it shows a speed demon rapidly dashing this is good for getting targets off your back but yeah this isn't anything special so a 6 out of 10 move 3 is blazing amputation with this ability you attack the opponent with two slashes which is pretty good 7.5 out of 10 move number four is quick tackle this one is a quick dash to run the enemy also tackling them and the special thing about this is that it also breaks block 8 out of 10 the fifth move is speed rush this is probably my favorite move of the entire game since you start to run very fast and just run over the enemy since this is my favorite the rating will be pretty based 9 out of 10 overall the whole reaper demon art is an 8.5 out of 10 so now we have the fifth blood demon art arrow the first move is arrow knockback this one probably just explains itself you just unleash an arrow towards the enemy which does knockback 6.5 out of 10 pretty boring move number two is arrow fly with this ability you summon an arrow on which you can fly but the weird thing is that it doesn't even attack so up to now this one will get the lowest rating 5.5 out of 10 the third move is piercing arrow with this ability you bring the enemy towards them and then just punch them away pretty the epic i guess so 7.5 out of 10 move 4 is koketsu arrow with this move you summon a fast arrow which brings the enemy into the sky damaging them in the process 8 out of 10 the last move is arrow spike this ability summons arrows from the ground and then attack the enemy this one even goes through blocks which is very dangerous that's why it gets a 8 out of 10 overall i will give the arrow blood demon art a 7 out of 10 blood demon art number 6 is is shockwave and the first move is air type this is just a simple jump into the air and throw something move 6.5 out of 10 the second move is chaotic type and this one is very chaotic see what i did there okay i'm sorry anyway with this move you do a barrage of punches 
7.5 out of 10. The third move is Clown Splitter. This move is not a regular uppercut, but an uppercut kick, which deals a lot of damage. That's why it will just get a 7.5 out of 10. Move 4 is Explosive Fury. And no, not a furry or something. Because with this ability, you quickly rush towards the enemy and unleash a kick barrage when you land. This one is pretty nice, 8 out of 10. Move number 5 is Flashing Willow. With this move, you jump into the air and punch the floor doing damage to the enemy. Another 8 out of 10. The 6th move is Annihilation Type. With this ability, you rush towards the enemy, punching them doing insane damage. And this one also breaks blocks. This is the best out of them all, so an 8.5 out of 10. Overall, the Shockwave Blood Demon Art will get a 8 out of 10. The 7th Blood Demon Art is Swamp. And move number 1 is Swamp Puddle. You submerge yourself in a puddle of muddy water, and anyone who is above gets damage over time. 7.5 out of 10. The second move is Traveling Claws. This move creates a portal on their cursor, and then you just teleport towards the cursor and slash the person on the other side. Uh, a 7.5 out of 10. Move number 3 is Swamp Eject. This move is pretty similar to the last one, but instead of teleporting, you launch yourself towards the cursor, and then a muddy explosion is made upon contact. 8 out of 10. The fourth move is Swamp Trap. With this move, you create a muddy puddle at your curse's position, and when somebody walks in, they get trapped. They will get untrapped when someone hits them. This one is really good for starting combos, so that's why I will give this a 8 out of 10. Move number 5 is Self Replication, and in this move, you create two clones made out of mud. These clones run towards the nearest enemy, and when they reach the enemy, they punch them and disappear. 8.5 out of 10. The best and last move is Swamp Domain. This is similar to number 1, except you create muddy water over a larger area, and they can't move until they finish a mini game, which is similar to the cup game in Butterfly Mansion. And plus that, it is also a block breaker. 9 out of 10. Overall, the Blood Demon Art Swamp gets an 8.5 out of 10. The last Blood Demon Art is Dream. And the first move of this is Hypnosis. With this move, you gather energy in your palm, before releasing it towards the enemy. It also shortly disables the enemy from moving. 7 out of 10. Move 2 is Melodic Whisper. This ability launches a barrage of energy towards the enemy. This move is a block breaker. So 7.5 out of 10. The third move is Echoing Whisper. This one is pretty cool, since you create an orb which can be detonated by pressing the ability button again, and it also disables the enemy from moving. 7.5 out of 10. The fourth move is Piercing Flash. With this move, you summon a large tentacle from your curse's position, and anyone within the range will be impaled by the flash tentacle. This move is also a block breaker. This move is good, but it can definitely be better, so a 7.5 out of 10. The fifth move is Spiritual Core. This move will make you apply constant pressure to the spirit core of the opponent, and you and the enemy will fight over control by playing a mini game, and if you win, the other person's soul will implode. This can only be used on unable to move opponents. 7 out of 10. And the very last move is Flash Monster. You create a big Flash Monster which will release 3 large attacks, and this one also breaks blocks. It will get a 8 out of 10. If I had to give Dream an overall rating, I'd say it's an 8 out of 10. Today, I'll be rating and showcasing every single breathing style to find out which is the best, starting with sound. And the first move is Bursting Bloom. And with this move, you just dash towards your enemy and you slash them. 7 out of 10. The second move is Raw. I'm sorry. Here, you lift your sword up and you smash it onto the ground, creating an explosion. This one is alright. 7.5 out of 10. And now, move number 3, Resounding Slash. And this move is pretty cool, since you create a lot of explosive slashes, and these do great damage to the enemy. It also deals a lot of damage to my ears. It is very loud. 8 out of 10. The fourth move is Explosive Impact. With this ability, you grab the enemy and pull them towards you, before creating an explosion and blowing them away. If some of you care, this is a block breaker, so 8 out of 10. Move number 5 is Smoke Screen. With this ability, you create a smoke explosion to go invisible. And if you press the ability button again, you explode. 8.5 out of 10. The sixth move is string performance. And oh, this is a beauty, since with this ability, you create a set of fireworks around you. And if the enemy gets hit by the initial charge, a set of
of animations play dealing insane damage. It also looks pretty cool. 9 out of 10. The second breathing style is Roar. And the first move is Water Surface Slash. This ability is just a simple dash and slash. 7 out of 10. Move 2 is Water Wheel. This move is very good since you spin in a water wheel towards your enemies. You can also hold down the button to keep spinning longer. Uh, yeah, insane, I guess. 8 out of 10. The third move is Water Serpent. And with this ability, you release a water serpent towards the enemy. However, it is very easy to dodge and aiming can be difficult. I know a lot of kids who are watching this video have terrible aim. So that's why I will just lower the rating. 6 out of 10. Move 4 is Drop Ripple Thrust. And this ability will make you dash forwards and release a ripple thrust towards the enemy. Why did they give all these moves such difficult names, man? This thing gets in 7.5 out of 10. The fifth move is Waterfall Bassin. Here you just jump into the air and you create a water explosion when you land. It also breaks blocks, so another 7.5 out of 10. Now the last move is Constant Flux. With this ability, you just keep spinning with a ring of water around you. And at the end, you just release a water dragon towards your enemy. I didn't even knew this existed. Uh, 8 out of 10. Well, overall, water gets a 7 out of 10. Pretty basic. Breathing style number 3 is Thunder. And the first move is Thunderclap and Flash. And with this move, you quickly dash through the enemy and you make them stand still. And then you just damage them. 7.5 out of 10. Move 2 is Heat Lightning. And with this move, you send an explosion lightning fast towards your enemy. 7 out of 10. The third move is Rapid Slashes. And this one is pretty obvious. Since you just rapidly slash the opponent. Nothing special. 7.5 out of 10. Moving on to number 4. Rumbling Thunderbolt. You just grab the opponent and take them into the sky and slam them into the ground. Yo, these moves are starting to get so violent. 8 out of 10. Move number 5 is Rise Spirit. And this one is pretty cool. Since you create a sort of bubble around you. And the moment you release the attack button. You teleport inside of a stream of lightning towards the enemy. 7.5 out of 10. The 6th move is Thunderclap and Flash Sixfold. What even is this name? But this one is pretty much the same as the first move, but it just does more damage and it breaks blocks. So, 8 out of 10. In total, Thunder gets in 7.5 out of 10. Breathing style number 4 is Snow. And the first move is Layered Frost. With this, you launch yourself into the air and you slam into the ground, turning the ground into ice. 7 out of 10. Now, move number 2 is Frost Pad. This move allows you to go in snow and then you dig yourself into the ground leaving a snow pathway behind you. And when you go out of the snow, the enemy above gets hit by an attack. 7 out of 10. The third move is Frost Dessert. Upon use, you spin around and put your sword up into the air. And then you just create an avalanche of snow. 7.5 out of 10. Move number 4 is Frost Gnaw. Here you pull your sword back and you shoot snow out of your sword, dealing solid damage. 7.5 out of 10. The fifth move is Illusory Storm. And you do the same as the last move, but you shoot three times in a row. And it's it's also a block breaker. 8 out of 10. Now the last move from snow is snow tide vortex. Here you swing your sword and you summon two icicles that go through the enemy. 8 out of 10. And the overall score of snow is a 7.5 out of 10. Moving on to breathing style 5 is insect. With the first move being jawbreaker. Here you launch yourself at the opponent and then body slam them into the ground. And because you're so fat you even stun them. Bruh. Move number 2 is dance of the beasting through flutter or something. This move is just a simple jab towards the opponent. 7 out of 10. Now the third move is Dance of the Dragonfly Compound Eye Hexagon. Though I swear if I see one more hard name. But anyway with this move you jab a lot of times towards the opponent before doing one final powerful jab. 7.5 out of 10. The fourth move is Dance of the Centipede. 100 legged zigzag. And here you dash towards the enemy finishing it off with a powerful jab. This move can be held down to increase the duration of the dash. A little tip for you guys. 8 out of 10. Move number 5 is Mantis Kick. This move is a bit different because it's a counter. So when you're being attacked, you can press the ability button and kick them away. 8.5 out of 10. The 6th move is Butterfly Dance. Caprice. Caprice. I don't know. This move is basically the same as the first move, except it does more damage and it breaks block. 8.5 out of 10. Overall, Insect gets an 8 out of 10. Oh, that's pretty nice. The sixth breathing is Wind. And the first move is Purifying Wind. And with this move, you will send a massive wind towards your enemy. It's just basically a big fart. <laughs> 
sorry. 7.5 out of 10. Move number 02 is Dust Whirlwind Cutter. This will make you dash towards the opponent inside of her whirlwind. 7.5 out of 10. The third move is Clean Storm Wind Tree. With this ability, you create a massive 360 degree wind around you, dealing damage to anyone close. 8 out of 10. Move 4 is Black Wind Mountain Mist. You just basically uppercut your opponent, but with wind. This is nice. 8 out of 10. And the fifth move is Cold Mountain Wind. Here, you create three massive wind slashes around you, dealing very good damage. 8.5 out of 10. Move number 6 is Ideaten Typhoon. And here, you start flying in the air and send five flying wind slashes towards the enemy. Of course, doing damage, and it also breaks blocks. 9 out of 10. <clears throat> Overall, wind gets an 8.5 out of 10. So now we have the breathing style number 7, flame. And the first move is rising scorching sun. And this is another uppercut, but instead of wind, it is with flames. 7 out of 10. Move 2 is unknowing fire. Here you dash towards the opponent and you release a 360 degree strike of flames. Sounds really interesting, but 7.5 out of 10. The third move is blooming flame undulation. Hmm? I think I'm the only one who thinks these names are hard but it's just a slash around the area of the enemy 7.5 out of 10 move number four is blazing universe here you jump into the air and you slash the opponent with flame when you land 7.5 out of 10 the fifth move is flame tiger Bruh. i have to stop doing that and here you create two flame slashes and then you end it with a flame tiger which is a block breaker 8 out of 10 now move number six is purgatory you dash towards the enemy doing a slash you also stab the opponent in epic fashion with a sick animation. This ability does insane damage and it breaks blocks. I do not recommend doing this in real life. 8.5 out of 10. Overall, Flame gets a... 7.5 out of 10. Next up, we have breathing style number 8, which is Beast. And the first move is Beast. You just simply stab the opponent. 7 out of 10. Move number 2 is Crazy Cutting. And here you dash towards the enemy and start cutting them like crazy. 7.5 out of 10. Now, move number 03 is Bending Slash. You slash the entire area around you in 180 degrees. 7.5 out of 10. The fourth move is Throwing Strike. And basically, you throw yourself at the opponent and you hit them into the face. 8 out of 10. Now, move number 5 is Devouring Slash. You uppercut the opponent and you push them away. Simple, but a... <laughs> Simple but effective. 8 out of 10. Move 6 is Devouring Rush. Here you start quickly running towards the opponent. And you send them into the air. And then you slice their... Oh, what? I thought this was a kids game. 8.5 out of 10. Overall, Beast gets an 8 out of 10. So now we came to breathing style number 9, Miss. And the first move is Cloud and Haze. You basically just dash towards the opponent, cover it in Miss. 7.5 out of 10. The second move is 8 layered Miss. And here you slash the opponent 8 times. What do you think the rating is? An 8 out of 10. Move number 3 is Distant Haze. You slash the area around you and tell teleport towards the enemy. This does damage, of course, and it also breaks block. 8.5 out of 10. The fourth move is shifting flow flash. Here you do a 360 slash around you, dealing very good damage. 8.5 out of 10. Now, move number 5 is lunar dispering mist. You jump into the air and you release 3 mist slashes and you just damage the opponent. Basically like the wind ability. 8 out of 10. Now, the last move, obscuring clouds. You basically create a giant area filled with mist. And if your opponent is in this, he or she or it or huh? will get damaged. And besides this, you will also turn invisible. Very OP. It is also a block breaker, so 9 out of 10. Overall, Mist gets a really high score. 9 out of 10. Leave your own opinions down in the comments. Goodbye.